Welcome to Keto is the Worst, where I believe that if done properly, a low-carb lifestyle is not only healthy, but it is sustainable long-term and not at all restrictive. So today, I'm actually going to do a recipe that I filmed two weeks ago and completely messed up. So you'll probably see it in the little thumbnail or I'll put it right here somewhere. So a little story, right? Two weeks ago, I filmed the shroom stack burger from Shake Shack. I was gonna do it without bread, just try to coat it and fry it and see how it came out. Came out looking horrible. It tasted pretty good, but it came out, I couldn't put a picture of it anywhere. So what I'm doing today is revisiting it. I'm gonna to try to actually fry it in the oven because what I realize is I don't really fry things anyway. So then we're gonna see how that comes out. And if it doesn't come out bad, this might be part two that gets held and then we'll do a part three, four, and whenever I get it right, that's when you'll see it. Okay, so let's be honest, I'm still experimenting a lot on this channel, both in what I actually make and in how I put these videos together. So I usually wanna be a little bit better in front of camera, but I'm very disappointed in the energy that I brought on camera. So I'm just gonna do this over voiceover instead. And if necessary, cut back into the actual video. But to get started, we need some portobello mushrooms and two types of cheeses. This one uses a Munster and a cheddar cheese. Is it a second story time already? The week after I had filmed that shroom stack, Sam the Cooking Guy, which I watched a lot of, put one out of the same exact thing. And I'm going to use a couple of the things that he said to do in that video. And the first one is to microwave the portobello mushrooms first. Last time I did it, I actually used a toaster oven and they still came out pretty big and didn't release enough water. So we're gonna try the microwave this time. So there are a few reasons why that did not work. One is that I'm not deep frying because avocado oil is expensive and I don't wanna use that much. So I was just shallow frying. And in general, you should be staying away from the vegetable oils, canola oil, peanut, whatever. So that meant that it was very hard to fry the entire thing, which is why I'm trying oven this time around. But to start off, I'm going to place these into the microwave and in pretty much 30 second burst to release as much water as I can. This did not work fully. So I did put it into the toaster oven for a little bit just to dry it out a little bit. But the idea is to shrink it down as much as possible, get all the water out so that it is easier to stick together and the, the coating will stick better and it'll be easier to fry, eat, all that. So while that is doing its thing, I'm going to start the cutting of the cheeses. It's a weird way to say it, the running of the bulls, I guess. Anyway, this is Munster and Kobe Jack. Gonna just cut it up into slices. These two halves make only one because they're gonna be sandwiched together. So I just kind of eyeballed how much cheese would fit in pretty much a burger bun. Kobe. Now the 90 seconds are pretty much done but it can't it was still very watery so i took a couple paper towels to try to press it down and try to get some of that liquid out but i ultimately decided to put it into the toast oven the way that i had done it last time i tried this just to try to dry it out a little bit more while that goes we're going to start the shack sauce well my take on a shack sauce now i call it my take on a shack sauce because in the real one, it has ketchup, mayo, some mustard, and pickles. Me personally don't like pickles, and on keto, I do not have ketchup. And I realized this making it the last time. Oh, I don't have ketchup. Oh, I don't have ketchup. What I came up with was instead of ketchup to make it red, we're gonna use smoked paprika. And instead of the pickles, it's gonna be diced jalapenos. You're still gonna get that little sour taste from it, because these are kind of pickled anyway. So just to run that back, it's gonna be mayo, garlic paste, smoked paprika, jalapenos, like diced jalapenos in that pickled jar, and Dijon mustard I use for this one. Also, I put in some salt, garlic powder, and pepper just to taste, it's not really necessary. The mushrooms are about ready. You can hear them sizzle out of the toast oven. These have to cool for a little bit, so I'm gonna lay them down on some paper towels, put one over it so it can pull some of that moisture out a little bit more. And we're on to the next stage, which is breading. 
and how we're going to do this the keto way is using unflavored protein powder which is a zero carb brand and pork rinds for the outer which will act like the panko and of course we're going to use a bee and egg for the binder and to the pork rinds we're also going to add some parmesan cheese just to help the little coating and flavor After a little mix, we want to season the protein powder. You can always use the 11 herbs and spices, but for me, I'm using salt, garlic powder, pepper, and onion powder. Over here. See, that's how they look now, ugly. I know we're sick about how many paper towels are being used to dry these off, but it is a lot of moisture coming off these mushrooms. I'm gonna dry it off one last time, and then now we are ready to kind of sandwich these together, bread them, and fry them, well, in the oven. And right here, I'm just shaving off a little bit so it's a little bit flatter where they're gonna be sandwiched together because it was a little bit rounded. Last time I did not do this, but we're gonna use a layer of mayo, then put some cheese down, and then put another layer of the mayo so that we can bind these things together. Here I'm just cleaning up some of the edges of the cheese because if you don't have a seal around the edge, it's gonna be harder to put together. So just by making sure everything is within the edges makes it a lot easier at the end. Maybe that's what it was. Was this too much? Should I put the cheese a part of it? Cause look. This no longer seals. So what if we put that as a part of this? It's not a layer of cheese, but it's just like cheese and sauce together. And that's why this is not a recipe video because we're just making things up on the spot. Okay, so change of plans. We're gonna cut the cheese up into smaller pieces, mix that in with the sauce, and then use that as a spread to put these two things together. My keto strategy in general doesn't have me use a lot of replacements, so I don't like replacing it with bread or keep like pizza crust. But if you like mushrooms, you can definitely use this as like a roll, a sandwich bread or something like that. You can put bacon in the middle, some type of chicken salad or ground beef, make an actual burger this way. And the way that you're gonna see how this ends up with the fried crust, it, it's easy to hold, so it's not as greasy and it will be pretty much great as that. For those who are used to frying things, this does not change. We're using the protein powder as our flour, so make sure you get it well coated, and then into the egg wash it goes, all the way around, and then dip it into the pork rinds to give it that exterior crunchy layer. It's a good idea just to pat it down. You wanna make sure that everything has a healthy layer of this panko or the pork rinds and get it into all the crevices all around the sides. Make sure that you use as much as you have or are willing to use. How's that look too? Now to help this get a little bit more of a fried look, it'll be good if you had like an oil sprayer but mine had not come in yet, so I'm just drizzling some avocado oil along the exterior and doing it on both sides. What's the best way? Foil, parchment paper, or rack? Part of me wants to say rack. So my only concern with using a rack is that because of the coating, it might get stuck on the grill of this thing. But the upside is that the air can actually get underneath it and crisp up the bottom as well, instead of having it sit on parchment paper or aluminum foil, where it won't be able to get around the entire thing. To help it not stick, I did use some coconut oil spray on the, the rack itself. And at the end of the day, it did not stick. What can I do with this? I have been thinking about things to do with this leftover. So the mushroom went into the oven at 375 
and for this i have always wanted to see what i can i do with this a leftover because protein powder is more expensive than regular old flour and pork rinds are more expensive than panko so i don't really want to waste it so what i came up with this is sort of a take on cheesy biscuits so we'll be using the egg as well and we're going to season it a little bit and kind of make a dough out of it and i was just going to make a mound with this but it the texture was a little bit off so have to kind of think through this and experiment a little bit more the leftover cheese did help and the flavor was there but it's just the texture and it's a little bit too grainy and i think that's part of the protein powder so maybe a coconut flour almond flour or a blend of all of them will make these actually pop it looks like a little cheesy biscuit has that same consistency no i'm not going to say it tastes like a biscuit from red lobster i'm not going to say it you can think it i can think it but very interesting so the one thing i've seen because i try to make muffins with protein powder and it looks like that's that what i'm tasting because it's not dry but it's not moist either so somewhere in between that's a little weird and this is I mean, it's not bad it's been 20 minutes i'm gonna let it go for like five more minutes and then take it out now this is coming out this has been 30 minutes all right okay so what do we see I mean, visually it is light years from what I made last week. Um, and like I said, the flavor is gonna be there no matter what, because I already know, you kind of already know what it's gonna taste like. Um, so there's no messing that part up. It's just how can we present it in a nice way? And I think that this actually came out very nice. So if I had the little spray, cause you can see it, so if my spray bottle for oil had come in on time, this would have looked a lot crispier, but I think this looks great. And I think this is how I'm gonna fry stuff from now on. I don't like using that much oil. Canola oil is bad, avocado oil is expensive, and I don't eat that much bacon to save all that fat. And even if I do, it's like this much, so you can't deep fry, it's only like shallow frying. It's not something for me. So I think, cause the next time I make cod, I'm gonna fry it. It will be a part of my meal prep and I'm going to do it like that. A cross section, this kind of cooled down, but everyone does a cross section. So I know let's do a cross section, right? And open that up. See, I don't even know how that looked. For now, I think that's pretty good, right? And now let's try it. Now, of course, it would have bread, lettuce, or in a lettuce wrap, but I think you can just eat it like this let's not make keto too complicated you know like like you should be able to hear that right there's a good little crunch there's a spice because the jalapenos i mean bro this is <coughs> okay a little too much of the jalapenos but cheese is there i'm pretty sure you can put a little bit more cheese for me, like I took a lot of it out because when I chopped it up and tried to put it in the sauce. So you could probably put and go away with a lot more cheese. But honestly, I'm definitely going to keep doing this though. Oven fried version because I think it's just a lot less work. And when it comes to frying, I'm not one to talk about all oh, the oil and all that stuff because it's not that bad. But it's just, I think it's a cleaner product. You don't have to use canola oil so you can and you don't have to use a whole lot of avocado oil because who can really do that and yeah you just spritz it a little bit and then it gives that color but the crunch is there from the start the flavor is there from the start like i said so i think this came out so much better than what i attempted to do the other and the other one was just greasy like there was a pool of grease i'm going to show you the pictures but my goodness this one is 
This one was really good. So let me do my little outro. Before I do that, let's go for a little bit of the sauce, right? A little bit more of the sauce up top. So instead, if you want to use pickles instead, um, then you won't have the spice. If you want to use ketchup that is non, if you want to use ketchup that is no sugar, like um, the Hughes brand, I think, <laughs> keto ketchup, you could use that and that'll give it whatever flavor you want, right? This is just creating however you want it to create. <coughs> Jesus, it's crazy. Okay, so that is about it for today. This was my attempt at making the shroom stack burger. It is not anywhere close to that, but the taste wise is, is really good. It's an oven fried version of it. Um, so I can just load up these tags because there is a lot going on for me in this video. So for me, it's important to stay in the kitchen and make up new things, make this fun, keep you motivated. And this is why I say it's not restrictive at all. So if you are interested in learning about more recipes or the science behind keto how to stay motivated how to stay on track and on target for your weight loss and fitness goals consider subscribing give me a like if you like this video comment let me know what you want to see next but i will see you in the next one and thanks for watching i think that's it